Sunair awnings are easy to install once you learn how. This video is designed to guide you through the process of proper measuring and installation. First, measure the width that you want the awning to be. In this case, it's the same width as the deck. Make sure the wall is free of conduits, downspouts, or anything that can interfere with the awning. The projection is the measurement from the wall out. However, when the awning is installed at the recommended pitch or slope, the actual projection from the wall will be somewhat less than the projection measurement ordered. This is shown in a chart in the manual. So when ordering the awning, add to the projection measurement to compensate for this loss. To install the awning at the proper height, make sure you allow at least seven feet of clearance under the front bar when the awning is extended. For each foot that the awning projects out from the wall, raise the wall installation by three inches. Therefore, if the awning projects ten feet, the installation height should be seven feet plus thirty inches, or nine feet six inches. See your manual for details. When an awning is installed on an open flat wall like this, the optional hood system shown here is recommended. When installing the awning on siding, you can either use a 2 by 10 pressure treated board behind the installation, as shown here, or for a nicer looking installation, you can use these spacers, available from Sunair. See your manual for installation details. Now, you're ready to begin your installation. As you open the box, be careful not to cut the fabric. When you remove the plastic covering, tear it with your hands. Don't use a knife, or you'll cut the fabric. Brackets like this one are used to attach the awning assembly to the wall. Make sure they don't interfere with the center support or with the arm attachments. Make sure every bracket is attached to a stud, header, or solid mount for strength. Use 3 8 inch lag bolts. However, longer bolts may be needed for various wall thicknesses. For every awning installation, the outer brackets should be placed within 6 to 12 inches from the outside of the arm attachments if possible. For awnings with more than two arms, the remaining brackets should be spaced evenly along the awning within 6 to 12 inches of the arm attachment. Keep in mind that the arm bars on the awning can be moved to the left or to the right. By loosening the bolts on the front bar and on the back bar but you have to make sure that you move the two bars exactly the same distance. Otherwise, the awning won't open and close properly. This awning has the optional hood system. The AU15 hood adapter has to be attached to the wall bracket before installation on the wall. Slide the AU15 on and tighten with a 532nds inch Allen wrench. Now you're ready to install your brackets. Attach one outer bracket first. Make sure you measure carefully so it's at the right height and check to be sure that it's straight and level. To find the position for your second outer bracket, attach a string line to the bottom of the first bracket and pull it across your measured distance. Then use a level and mark your position for the second bracket on the wall. Secure your second bracket. Reattach your string line and double check to make sure the brackets are level. Use the string line to properly position any additional brackets and again make sure they don't interfere with the center support of the awning or with any additional arm attachments. Now it's time to install the hood system. 
use the 5 16 inch bolts from the AU15 hood adapters. Slide in one bolt for every awning bracket into each slot in the hood. Now, attach the hood end caps with the Phillips head screws enclosed. Lift the hood on top of the brackets and slip the hood bolts through the slots of the hood adapters. Put on a washer and a nut for every bolt and tighten with a half inch open end wrench. Now install the awning by inserting the square bar tube into the slots on the brackets. Then insert the T-bolt into the slot on the top of the bracket. And insert the 5 16 inch bolt with a washer through the bottom of the bracket. Make sure they fit together properly. Then tighten with a half inch ratchet. When the awning is fully secured and bolted, you're ready to set the pitch. You do this by first extending the awning as you see here. After the awning is fully extended, your first step in setting the pitch is to loosen the two 17 millimeter nuts on the side of the slide unit. With a helper holding the front bar, use the 13 millimeter bolt in front of the slide unit to raise or lower the pitch. Do not raise the pitch without someone helping to lift up the arm. Now, lower or raise the pitch on the remaining arms. Make sure the front bar is level from side to side. When the pitch is set, retighten the slide unit bolts. Make sure that the C bracket at the center support is in the proper slot so that it's exactly one half inch from the top of the fabric. When it's properly set, retighten the bolt. Now, retract the awning. It's important to check at this point that the arms are retracting together simultaneously. As you can see, the left arm is closing before the right arm. So extend the awning out about one foot. To make the adjustment, first mark your position on the front bar. Then loosen the nuts on the coupling of the front bar. And move the arm slightly to the left until the hinges are lined up exactly opposite each other. Then retighten the nuts on the front coupling bar. Now extend and retract the awning to make sure that the arms are operating together. If they're not, you may have to adjust the other arm as you did the first. You'll either move the front bar coupling inward toward the center of the awning or outward depending on which way the elbow has to be adjusted. The elbows should hit the square bar simultaneously as the awning retracts. On the Sun Air model only, install the slide unit cover after the pitch is adjusted by hooking on the bottom and clicking in at the top. If supplied with your Sun Air awning, apply the nut caps over every visible bolt on the arm attachments, brackets, and front arm attachments. Now you're done with the installation. If you have any questions or problems, consult your manual. Now we're going to show you how to install the maxi awning. The width of the awning should extend six inches beyond each edge of the window for proper coverage. The projection that is, the distance out from the wall, should equal roughly half the height of the window. The system always comes with extra fabric to allow the bar to be lowered 160 degrees for complete coverage of the window when the sun is low. A hood system is recommended if the awning is mounted on a flat exposed wall. If the awning is installed under an overhang of 8 inches, the optional hood is not needed. Always make sure the brackets can bolt into solid material like studs or headers for strength. Because of the awning overhang, the arms are usually mounted six inches in from each side of the awning to attach to the window frame. Once your window is measured, you're ready to begin installation. Make sure the end brackets are attached to the awning and measure from end to end. 
This is the distance you'll use when mounting your brackets on the wall. Slide the brackets off the awning. Then, using a wrench, remove the gear from the end bracket like this. Next, mount both brackets securely to the wall according to your measurements. Make sure that both brackets are even and level. This bracket, AU606, is used to support maxi awning hoods when the awning width is 10 feet or more. Position it with the string line and space it evenly between the end brackets. Now you're ready to prepare the hood to place on the brackets slide a T-bolt for the middle bracket support into this slot on the hood. Now attach one hood end cap using Phillips screws provided on the side of the hood opposite the gear. Now fit the hood onto the top of the brackets. The left hand side will slip in a groove next to the wall. Then slip the T-bolt into the slot on the middle support bracket. And on the right Position the hood so it fits into the groove next to the wall. To do this, you may have to loosen the bracket until the hood slips into the groove. Then, retighten the bracket. When the hood fits properly, then tighten the nut on the middle support bracket. Now lift the awning and place the round gudgeon pin into the hole in the bracket on the opposite side of the gear. Then place the gear on the square gudgeon shaft and slip the assembly into the bracket. Be sure not to let go of the awning until it's secured with the appropriate bolts. Before you tighten these bolts, make sure you adjust the gear eye down and slightly out. Then tighten the bolts securely with a 10 millimeter wrench. You are now ready to install the awning arm. Measure the length from the front of the arm attachment to this pin on the back of the arm wall attachment. Then, starting from the bottom of the end bracket, measure down the same distance on the wall. And you must be sure to subtract half an inch from the measurement and mark. The mark on the wall should align with the center pin on the arm wall bracket. Then mark your hole in the top of the bracket and drill. Then bolt the top of the bracket securely to the wall. Now repeat this procedure for the second arm. Bolt only the top of the arm bracket exactly as you did with the first arm. Make sure that the front fixtures of each arm are pointing toward the center of the awning. Next, loosen the screw that holds the end cap on the front bar and carefully pry the end cap off. Now slide the T-bolts into the slot on the front bar. One T-bolt for each arm. Then replace the end cap on the front bar and make sure you tighten it securely. Now lift up the arm and attach it to the front bar by slipping the T-bolt through the slot of the arm fixture. Then attach with the nuts provided. Do the same procedure with the second arm. Make sure that the arms are attached so that the front bar is straight. Then tighten with a 13 millimeter socket wrench. Now you're ready to bolt and secure the bottom of each arm bracket. Make sure that the front of the hood is snapped securely onto each end of the awning brackets. And finally, attach the end cap on the hood with the Phillips screws provided. Now your installation is complete and ready for you to test. If you followed instructions and measured carefully, there should be no problems or further adjustments to make. By performing this operational test you can assure yourself and assure your customer before you leave the job site that the awning is properly installed and works exactly as it should.
Measuring for the combi awning is the same as for the maxi awning. It should be six inches wider than the window on each side, and the projection should be half the height of the window. The combi comes with a hood or cassette as standard. Also, it is operated by a pull tape as standard, rather than a crank. To install the combi, first remove the end cap from the front bar. Then, slide the T-nuts into the bracket of the front bar, one T-nut for each arm. Then replace the end cap, and tighten with a Phillips screwdriver. Now, take the smaller T-bolts and slide them into the slot on back of the cassette. Tie a rope around the awning assembly to hold it together during installation. The combi brackets should be mounted right above the window about four inches inside each end of the cassette. Any extra brackets should be spaced evenly. Make sure the end brackets are installed at the same height and that they are level. Slip the cassette into this slot at the top of each bracket until it fits firmly in place. Then slip one T-bolt into the bottom slot of the bracket and do the same on the other side. Attach the nut into each T-bolt and tighten. Next, Measure the arm from the front arm attachment to the center pin of the arm wall bracket. And measure the same distance down from the bottom of the cassette. But be sure to subtract one half inch before you mark where you'll drill your hole for the arm bracket. Then, bolt the arm to the wall using only the top hole of the arm bracket you'll measure and mount the second arm in the same manner. Make sure that the coupling fixtures on each arm are pointing in toward the center of the awning. Lift up the arm and attach the front bar coupling to the front bar of the awning. Place the nut on the bolt, but loosely enough so you can make some adjustments. Do the same with the second arm and attach the nut. Make sure the arms are attached straight before you tighten. Then bolt the bottom hole of each arm bracket. Make sure the pull tape is not twisted and feed it through the tape lock as shown. Now, you're ready to attach the tape lock to the wall. The tape lock is usually attached below the arm bracket, but above waist level. Make sure the awning is secured in place by the tape lock before you untie the rope you use during assembly. Now, secure this cleat to the wall directly below the tape lock. Lower the awning all the way down and cut the tape about one foot below the bottom of the cleat. Your final step is to slip the tape through the acorn handle. Then tie a knot so the handle won't slip off. Now you are done with the installation and ready to test the awning. Operation is simple. Pull out on the tape to lock. Push in on the tape to release. Finally. Make sure that the front bar fits freely into the cassette when you retract the awning. Now you're done.